What's going on guys and welcome to Who To Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those of you out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players you could bring in for a specific team in career mode. So in today's episode of Who to Sign For, we are going to use the Spanish side of Atletico Madrid. Yes, Atletico Madrid of La Liga. Now, last season, this side finished in third place in La Liga and reached the quarterfinal stage of both the Copa del Rey and the Champions League. This season, as I record this commentary right now, they're in third place in La Liga. Not out of the title race yet. They are only three points behind the leaders, Barcelona, right now. They were knocked out in the Copa del Rey quarter finals but of course as we know they are into the Champions League semi-finals this season where we'll be taking on Bayern Munich over two legs. So we're going to use Athletic Madrid for the two to sign for and I'll give you my suggestions on what players you could sign for this team. Now they start off with a budget of around £43 million. Of course that could be increased with the boost you might get and also the pre-season tournaments as well and you'll see their squad right here. It's a pretty decent team. It's a very very decent team and I'll definitely say one of the more underrated sides. One of the more underrated five stars size I should say in career mode now when you think about the big teams in career mode and managing a big team right from the beginning you usually think of the likes of Barcelona and Real Madrid and Bayern Munich and teams like that but Atletico Madrid have actually got a fantastic squad you're looking at the squad report right here there are so many good players and the one thing with Atletico Madrid which is really really interesting is they've got a ton of players that are currently loaned out right now also one player loaned in in Fernando Torres but a ton of players who are loaned out and not just players who are academy players players but also players that are really really good right now and experienced ones as well we'll be discussing that in a bit more detail a bit later on in the episode now you can see the contracts that are running down right now as well quite a few have their contracts over the end of the year I wouldn't give a contract to any of those players who have expiring come the end of 12 months the only one I'd recommend is the goalkeeper Moreira who's currently out on loan right now he's got 81 potential and could be all right in the future so I give him a contract extension but just let the other ones go as I don't think you'll bother end up uh, seeing them exceed their potential and become anything other than just a very average squad player for Atletico Madrid. So only give a contract to the goalkeeper Moreira there and let the other ones go. So for Atletico Madrid, £43 million pounds in their budget. You saw their squad right there. It is a very decent side, a very decent team. Now, a lot of people would have different opinions on where you should strengthen with Atletico Madrid, what position you should look for. Many people would suggest a striker role, but that's not where I would go for with Atletico Madrid if you wanted to buy a new player to make this side even better is currently right now. I would go for a new right winger and here's the reason why. They've got some good wingers already, Atletico Madrid but Griezmann right now is playing on the right wing for them in the game in the 4-3-3 when you initially start the game up and although he's totally capable of playing in that position, I personally believe he's more effective when playing through the middle in the main striker role, which is his main position in his listed position. So for me, I would push Griezmann into the middle, play him in a striker role, drop Fernando Torres to the bench and go in search of a new right winger. Now my main target for the right wing role would be this guy right here Dominico Berardi of Sassuolo he's 81 overall 20 years old and he has a growth rating of 6 and can grow uh, sorry growth rating of 5 even and can grow to 86 that is his listed potential right now in the current database you can get him for around 20 million pounds and I have to say I think this guy will be worth every single penny of that in the future when he does hit full potential at 86 he's got some really good stats to begin with and one of the big advantages to picking Berardi as well as your new right winger is that he's a left footed player and can cut in to shoot on his preferred left foot. Now, if you play Yannick Ferreira Carrasco on the left wing as well, he's a right-footed player, so he'll cut into his preferred right foot to shoot. And this year in FIFA, you have a lot more joy when cutting in with your wingers and playing them essentially as inside forwards and going for goal on their preferred feet, as opposed to running down the wing and crossing them into the centre, like we used to do in previous FIFAs. This year, cross is not as effective as I found anyway, as cutting inside with your wingers to shoot and playing them as inside forwards. So Berardi would not just be in a right winger, but more, be more like a right forward really to cut into his preferred left foot to shoot that's why I picked Berardi and again for 20 million pounds starting off at 81 overall very very good beginning stats and again potential to hit 86 in the game possibly exceed that with training a good form as well I think Berardi for 20 million pounds would, would be a really really solid investment and he would be my number one target for an athletic major of career mode uh, now the second player I look at buying is this guy right here Serge Aurier who I bought with Barcelona in my last two to sign for and that's because he's one of the best young right backs you can buy on the game 
game and PSG won't hold you to ransom over the signature of the player as well. We agreed a deal of £13 million plus Jesus Gamers for him and he's 22 years old, 81 overall, has potential to 86 in the game as well and you may think is this worth doing because Juan Fran is 81 overall as well, just as good as Serge Aurier and a very capable right back. Well he's several years older and Aurier of course only 22 years old, having the potential to 86 in the game as well. I would say he's your long term replacement for Juan Fran. So just like with Barcelona when we signed this guy I mentioned you can still play Danny Alves in that right back role if you'd prefer but this guy's your long term replacement for him. So Serge Aurier would come in and I think in my opinion for £13 million pounds plus Jesus Gamers, you wouldn't need him once you signed Aurier. You don't need three quality right backs in your team and you got one out on loan as well right now too. So Serge Aurier for £13 million pounds plus Gamers, in my opinion is a really solid signing and the second one I would make for Atletico Madrid. I'd also recommend selling a few players as well. Uh, one guy is this guy Augusto Fernandez, 79 overall, 29 years old. A very solid central midfielder but you've got a lot of quality CMs in this Athletic Madrid team already and I also recommend buying a new one as well which you'll see in just a moment's time. And there's also quite a few players that are in their 50s for overall as well that aren't really too good. I recommend selling those as well as not too many of these youngsters have really good potential. But this is the third guy going for Athletic Madrid if you're looking to sign some more players. I don't think I'll be able to pronounce his name very well but I think it's Ozyakut of Besiktas. He plays in the Turkish league. He's 80 overall. He is a Turkish midfielder, 22 years old, and I think this guy would be a really, really good uh, good signing. Now, I just said a minute ago that they've got some really good midfielders of Flecker Madrid, and that is true, but this is a really, really awesome midfielder. He's got four-star skills, four-star weak foot, can play CM, CDM, and CAM, so he's very, very good, all through the spine of the central midfield area, really. Can play in a deeper role, can play in a more advanced role, and also play in a normal central midfield role as well. 86 potential, starting off at 80 overall, having that growth rating of six and Thiago right here as well I'd also recommend selling him as well if you can we get about 6.5 million pounds for him Arsenal for him and I know he's 81 overall and a really really good player but at 34 years old with his contract up at the end of the year as well you're probably not going to give him a new one he's probably going to decrease in the first season so I'll get rid of him as soon as possible and try and get a bit of scratch for him whilst you still can but for this guy right here as you can see Ozzy Cook 22 years old 80 overall I think he'd be a really really good signing of course when you sold the central midfielder the 29 year old you just saw a moment ago there for about £7 million, £8 million, whatever you can negotiate. And when you sell Thiago as well, you might want another quality one to play in the middle of the park. And Ozzycourt would be a really, really good signing. Again, to have someone who's so versatile, not just good playing in the deep role, but in the more advanced role as well, and in the natural CM role too, I think he'd be a really good signing. And for about £18 million, I think he'd be worth every single penny, especially when you consider the fact he can at 86 in the future. And with good training and good form as well, he could exceed that as well. Again, only 22 years old, plenty of room to grow and once you sold Thiago, once you sold Fernandez, he wouldn't be a bad player to bring in and I definitely recommend it you probably would have to give him a wage increase but for £18 million I think he'd be a really really solid pickup, and he'd probably go on your first team straight away if nothing else on your bench and give you solid minutes off the bench or in midweek games or in cup games as well so Ozzycourt would be my third signing with Atletico Madrid I think he'd be a really really good choice and again the ability to play in a DM role and a cam role as well as the CM role as well is really underrated. Having a player that can do all three of those is really, really important because it means that in games where you need a holding midfielder to come off the bench and secure the back line, he can do that job. We need a midfielder to come on and be a playmaker, he can do that job. We need a box to box midfielder, he can do that job. He's fantastic, he's really, really versatile and definitely worth picking up, in my opinion. And for £18 million, a really, really smart signing. I'd also recommend selling this guy as well, uh, Thomas, 22 years old, 72 overall. He has potential to hit a 79 in the game, which is pretty decent, but because you've got some good midfielders here already, I would recommend selling him, cashing in on him right now, and just getting a bit of money for him if you can do so. And my fourth and final signing I would make for Athletic Madrid is this guy right here, Iñaki Williams, who plays for Athletic Bilbao. Now, he's a Spanish winger that can play right wing, left wing, and striker as well. You can get him for around £6 million, which is around his valuation, and this guy is a really, really, really solid squad player. Now, this is the type of player who you will not play in the first 11 the majority of the games in the season or you probably won't anyway but this guy coming off the bench being absolutely rapid and a physical beast his physical stats are absolutely incredible is a really really smart signing now he's 22 years old he starts off at 76 overall 21 years old I should say uh, starts off at 76 overall and has the potential to 84 in the game as well again you can get him for around 6 million pounds which is around his valuation and he would be a really really smart signing again look at those physical stats right there very very good he's strong he's quick he's agile very, very
very decent player. Technically not too bad either. Four-star skills, always good. High, high work rates. Gotta love that. And again, we can play on both wings and also in the striker role as well. A very solid pickup. And again, probably not the type of player who you will play much in the first season, in the first 11, in the majority of your games, but a very handy squad player and definitely worth the money, if nothing else, for that potential being 84. But as you can see right here, we're looking at the loan list and so many players have been loaned out from the Athletic Madrid side. So many good ones as well. Now, not many people would like to do this sort of thing, but this is what I recommend doing. If you've got some money left over and you want to improve the squad depth and you don't have plans to keep hold of the money for the January transfer window, recall some of your players because you can bring back some of your players that are out on loan right now who are really, really good, if not in the first team, at least for the squad role as well. Now, we brought back Miranda, Guilla Vogui, and also a right back, I think, as well. And I think we only spent about three million pounds recalling these three players. And Miranda is an 86 overall centre-back in the game at this time right now. I think he starts off at 85 overall. He's on loan at Inter, but you can recall the guy for just over a million pounds. Guilla Vogui's on loan at Wolfsburg. You can recall him as well. And I wouldn't, I wanted to recall Sequeira for the uh, left-back role, but I couldn't afford the recall fee. But I could do for the right-back, uh, which is Silvio, who can also play left-back as well. I recalled these three players for squad depth and also for Miranda to play in the first team as well. Now, a lot of people wouldn't like to do this because they say it's unrealistic, and that's totally fine. But again, as I said at the start of the episode, this isn't really about realism. It's just me trying to give you the best sort of uh, tips, if you will, to uh, to sign good players for Atletico Madrid. But the players that are on the loan out list, as I mentioned at the start of the episode, there are so many who aren't just kids and academy graduates, but really, really solid players. So Silvio and Guilavogui, they'll be squad players for you. This guy will go on the reserves. Guilavogui will go on the bench. But for Miranda, 85 overall to begin with, or 86 at this stage in the game for me, He's a really, really solid player to have in your team. He's a great player to have in your team, really. And having him loaned out effectively does nothing for you. You know, loaning a player out is basically done or should be done by clubs in the game to give players a chance to grow and develop their stats better, uh, again, in, in career mode in the game. But when you loan out players who are experienced, like uh, like Church, uh, La Kirchi there, who we recall, and Silvio, and, uh, of course, Miranda as well, when you've loaned them out in the game, they doesn't really do anything for you. They're just not at your club. And sure, you're not paying their wages, but because when you recall a player, it doesn't really get taken off the wage budget anyway, just the transfer fee you pay, or the recall fee, I should say, you pay, you may as well just bring them back. So a lot of people wouldn't like to do that, and that's totally fine. But again, this isn't all about being realistic. This is about me trying to give you the best tips. And in my opinion, if you've got the money to do that, bring back those players and have them in your squad, because they're very handy squad players. They improve your squad depth. And again, with players like Miranda and Guilla Vogui, they'll go in your first team. They'll go on They'll go on your bench or in the first 11 as well. In Miranda's case, it's the uh, the latter. For Guilavogui, it's the former. He'll go on the bench. Miranda in the first 11. And again, definitely worth doing because we only spent like three to three and a half million pounds, maybe four million pounds even on those play uh, those uh, four players or something like that. And we brought back Kirchi, 77 overall. Silvio, 75 overall, I do believe. And also Guilavogui, 79 overall. And Miranda, 86 overall. So you are bringing back four Four quality players for basically no money whatsoever. They improve your squad depth and also give you more options in different areas on the pitch as well. So I definitely would recommend that. And again, if you don't want to do it because you think it's too unrealistic, that's totally fine. But in my opinion, if you like me and you don't care about realism, you just like to have fun and do whatever, then I would say definitely that is my number one strategy for Atletico Madrid. Buy some good players, but don't forget about the players you got out currently on loan right now. Bring them back if you want. Put them in your squad. There's no bother. They'll be really really handy players and again you're only spending a few million pounds to do that so definitely worth at least considering and in my opinion it's a really really smart thing to do so you spend about 57 million pounds on new players with Atletico Madrid you see the squad report right here I definitely think I've strengthened it as well some really really good players coming in and again Berardi, Aurier and Oxford Cup as well all having 86 potential and Iñaki Williams having 84 as well all the four players coming in would have some really good growth and definitely be really fun to use in the first season onwards as well so this is how I would set up the Athletic uh, Madrid side. As you can see, the 4-3-3, very, very good indeed. Not a single player in the first 11 is under the overall of 80. So as per usual, we simulate to the end of the season, see how Athletic Madrid would do. Of course, their aims were to qualify for the Champions League in the, uh, Champions League, in the league uh, to finish the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey, and also reach the semifinals in the Champions League. Well, in the league, they finished in second place, six points behind the eventual winners, Real Madrid, and three points in, uh, in front of Barcelona, who finished in third place. I failed with the Copa del Rey objective, though. That was to reach the quarterfinal stages and they end up getting knocked out in a round
round of 16 stage. So that was a bit of a shame. It was Valencia that beat them and they, they uh, failed that objective. But in the Champions League, they actually went all the way and won it on penalties by beating Manchester United in a truly bizarre Champions League season. I mean, this, this tournament tree just looks really, really weird to me. I don't know why exactly, but either way, Athletic Madrid won the Champions League. They beat Manchester United on penalties 4-3 after a 3-3 free, free final. That must have been a thrilling game to watch. But uh, either way, they won the Champions League, an incredible achievement. And again, with this squad, though, I'm not really one bit surprised because I said right at the start of the episode, right at the top, this is a very underrated five-star team. Now, a lot of people would pass on Athletic Madrid when wanting to do a world-class team, but I would say it's a really awesome team to use because their budget is big, but not too big, and their squad is good, but not too good, and definitely worth a go as a five-star team because you can still improve it despite them being really good right now and again in the first season as well you can target silverware right from the off and for us getting them their first ever Champions League that was awesome and getting them to the Champions League for next season as well by finishing in second place six points final leaders Real Madrid again they did fail the cup objective which was kind of annoying considering how good this squad is and how strong it is in depth as well but either way the squad is really really well set up and in the first season if you can get some silverware if you can start off well if you can look good right from the beginning I'm sure in years to come you can dominate Spain and possibly possibly Europe as well. So those are the four signings I would recommend for an Athletic Madrid career mode, guys. Once again, I want to reiterate, though, that the signings I made weren't designed to be realistic, so please don't pick them apart if you didn't like them or thought they were just way too far-fetched. They're not supposed to be realistic, and again, with the loan thing as well, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I still would recommend it as a strategy, which could help you for the first season. But thank you for watching the episode regardless, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below who you would sign for an Athletic Madrid career mode, and also as well, tell me what team you want me to do next in this Who Decide for a series. I might go back to an English side or someone who I haven't done before in a league I've never done before anyway. Let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me what team you want me to do next in this series and I'll see which one takes my fancy. But thank you for watching the episode regardless. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.